Now that we have a handle on sequences, we're going to start talking about series. This is the example we saw at the beginning of talking about sequences and series. We're going to see some similar visual examples of series, and this is mostly to build intuition so that later on when you're doing computations, things make a bit more sense and they're easier to remember. Let's say I have a triangle now and the triangle has area one. The area of this is a quarter. The whole triangle has area one. I've divided it into four equal pieces and taken one. Then I'm going to look at the triangle above that and take its middle quarter. So what's this area? Well, this upper triangle had area one quarter and I've taken a quarter of that. So that's a quarter of a quarter. And I continue on in this manner. So the next triangle I'm going to take is here. This piece here had size one over four squared. I'm taking a quarter of that. So this piece has size one over four cubed. I can imagine continuing on with this for an infinite amount of time. The sequence that I'm generating has terms that are just one over four to the n. And the limit of this is zero. My blue pieces are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now let's think about the series. So the series looks like a quarter plus one over four squared plus one over four cubed and so on. So dot, dot, dot. We can write that in sigma notation. So my terms are one over four to the n, n starts at one, and we don't want to ever finish. We want to keep adding these and adding these and adding these. Now from the picture, we can actually figure out what number this equals to. If I were able to do this process infinitely long, I could figure out what is the blue area. And the nice way of doing that is to split this up into levels. So here's one level, and another level, and another level, and another level, and so on. At each level, I'm taking one third of the area of that level. So I've got one third of this, and 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 so on. And so if I could continue doing this for an infinite uh, amount of time, I would end up with one third of the total area of the triangle. So that tells us the sum, a quarter plus a sixteenth plus a sixty-fourth, etc., 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 is one third. Let's start with the series now. Let's say I want to add up a third plus a ninth plus a twenty-seventh and so on. Take a second, pause the video, write this in sigma notation. The terms of our sequence are 1 over 3 to the n, n starts at 1 and doesn't end, so we put an infinity up here. Now let's think about how we can draw a picture to figure out what this sum should be. What number does this add up to? I'm going to start with a rectangle, and the whole area of that rectangle is 1. I want to start with a third of that rectangle. My first term is 1 third, so I divide the rectangle into thirds, and I choose one of them. That's 1 third. My next term is 1 over 3 squared. This middle portion has an area of 1 third. If I take a third of that, that'll be 1 over 3 squared. So this area here represents my second term, 1 over 3 squared. So now you can imagine if I kept doing this for an infinite amount of time, I would end up with 1 half of this total rectangle. I include this bit and exclude this equal sized bit. I include this bit and exclude this equal sized bit. I include this bit and exclude this equal sized bit. So the amount of area that I'm adding up and the amount of area I'm leaving are the same. That means I've taken half the total area. Now let's evaluate this series. I want ninths. So I'm going to take a square of area one and I'm going to divide it into a 3 by 3 grid. For my first term, I want four of these. One, two, three, four. So that highlighted area is 4 ninths, and that's our first term. For the next area, I need 4 of an 81st. So I'm going to take this middle square, 
divided into a three by three grid. Now the size of each square in that grid is one over nine times one over nine. And I'm gonna take four of them again. I want you to pause the video and decide what is this number. This series, if I could add up these infinitely many numbers, what number would it be? Similar to the last example, I'm including and excluding an equal amount. So if I take the colored pieces for myself and I give the uncolored pieces to you, at this outer ring, this outer ring here, me and you have the same amount. Same thing with the next ring in. I give the uncolored pieces to you. I keep those brown pieces to myself. You and I have the same amount. For the ring inside here, I take the colored pieces for myself. I give the rest of them to you. And we continue to have the same amount. And as I continue to subdivide, the amount that gets counted and the amount that doesn't get counted is equal. So this is going to add up to 1 half. Let's summarize the series we've thought about so far. If my terms are quarters, powers of a quarter, the terms themselves are going to zero, right? Those, those triangles that I was drawing were getting very, very small, but the sum total of their area was going to a third. When we took thirds, those skinny rectangles I was drawing were getting smaller and smaller. The area of each rectangle was going to zero, but when I added up all of the rectangles, that area was going to one half. Finally, when I took those pieces of rings, each individual cluster of four was getting smaller and smaller. Those were approaching zero. But when I added all of their areas together, that number was approaching a half. These are all examples of geometric series, and there is a nice rule for evaluating them. For now, we're only going to evaluate them when the number that's being raised to a power is less than one. So here it was a quarter, here it was a third, here it was a ninth. We already saw that the terms of the sequence are going to go to zero. This is the way that the terms of the series are usually evaluated. Usually this index is starting at zero, and then our sum is going to be one over one minus r. In our case, we started our indices at one. And if I start them at one, the difference between the top series and the bottom series is one. Let's think about why their difference is one. This top series looks like r to the zero, plus r to the 1, plus r squared, and so on. The bottom series looks like r to the power 1, plus r squared, and so on. So the difference is this term, and r to the power 0 is 1. The top has 1 more than the bottom. That's why the bottom is the top, minus 1. Let's compare this to what we got. For a sub n, we had 1 quarter to the power n, so r is equal to 1 quarter, so the sum should be 1 quarter over 1 minus a quarter. That's 1 quarter over 3 quarters, which is a third. And that's exactly what we got. bn is similar. For bn, our r was 1 third. Since I'm starting at n equals 1, my sum should be 1 third over 1 minus a third. That comes from this formula. That's 1 third divided by 2 thirds, which is a half. And again, that's exactly what we found. The third one, c sub n, doesn't exactly fit this pattern, but if you'll remember, we did a lot of algebra with sigma notation when we were talking about Riemann sums, and we're going to get to use that again. Here I was adding up 4 times 1 ninth to the power n and started at 1. So when I put that big sum up, 4 is multiplied by every term. 4 is multiplied by a ninth, 4 is multiplied by a ninth squared, 4 is multiplied by a ninth cubed, so I can factor it out. Now I can apply my formula. r is 1 ninth, so this, and n starts at 1. So this is the formula I want. 1 ninth over 1 minus a ninth. That's 4 times a ninth divided by 8 ninths, which is 4 over 8, or 1 half.